Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to Cybersecurity TV. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the broken access control uh, with examples. So this is one of the section on the OS Top 10, which is A5. And this is very uh, popular and critical vulnerabilities that I still find in, I would say, 80% of the applications. So in this video we're going to talk about what the broken access control is. Uh, I'll give you some tips and techniques on how you should test against when you're testing against the application. Uh, we'll also discuss some real-world examples, and also I'll share one of the examples that I recently found in, in the uh, app test. And then at last, we'll talk about the prevention techniques on how what you should recommend to your clients uh, or to your uh, like you know employees or developers on how to fix against those this vulnerability. So let's get into it. Uh, if you don't mind, please hit the like button and also follow us on Facebook. Uh, the link is in the description. So first off, let's see what the broken access control is. So it's a restriction on what authenticated users are allowed to do are often not properly enforced. Attackers can exploit these flaws and access unauthenticated functionality or data such as access other users' accounts, view sensitive files, modify other users' data, and change access rights, etc. So this is the definition from the OWASP. Now let's simplify what it meant. So first thing is access to so broken access control is someone wants to unauthorized access to important and private data, which is very restricted and which is very controlled, which is not publicly available, and which is not authorized to access by X, Y, and Z person. So that is what the uh, uh, like you know uh, problem here is. That's that's why uh, that's what the name of the control is broken access control. So you have the access control, but that is broken. Now. This is not authentication issue. So uh, if I have to give you an example, uh, let's say, so when you get to the airport and then, uh, like, you know, you get the boarding pass, now you're going through the security check where they check against your ID, uh, like your driving license, and then also check your uh, boarding pass to make sure you have, the name is correct uh, and the driving license is uh, appears to be yours. And so they do the identity verification, right? So you go past it, that's your authentication. And when you board the plane, you are authorized to sit on seat number, let's say 5C or something. So now you have access to that seat, but you do not have access to, let's say, any other seat or cockpit where uh, usually captain sits. Now if some way, if you are able to get access to it, that's, that's a broken access control. You are not authorized to do that. So I, I just want to like you know talk about this example or terminology so it's easier for anyone to understand what the access control problem is and so it's not authentication but it's an authorization so you go past the authentication and now you have a issue on what you should have access versus what access you can get and the last thing is it's a different than the broken authentication which is in A2 uh, which we have all discussed in the in one of the previous videos if you are, if you haven't seen that already go back and ch check out our playlist we have that covered uh, in depth okay now let's talk about the tips uh, the penetration test tips or or at least what techniques or what you should be doing when you are testing against the OS top 10 or specifically A5 now, generally, uh, we have, like, you know, of course, uh, every big organization has SaaS and DAS tools. So SaaS is something like, you know, um, uh, HP 45, or you have uh, Synopsys, Covality, or tools like that. DAS is uh, dynamic analysis tools, uh, which are like AppSpider. You have Burp Enterprise. So those are DAS tools. Now you well, you might not have seen any of the scanners finding about the broken access control vulnerability. And none of that scanner has yet to find those vulnerability. And and I think it's very uh, very hard for them to even even like you know, detect this vulnerability unless you configure the macro, you configure the test case in such a way that they can do such testing. I know Acunetics recently introduced those features. I haven't I haven't checked out the other scanners, but there is a possibility you can do with the Acunetics. I haven't had a good luck with uh, finding with those like you know automated tools but yeah that that's one of the way but i think uh, as a as a pen test tips i can give you uh, this is mostly going to be a manual test so you do not want to rely on the automated tools to find out whether the uh, one application is vulnerable to broken access control or not now uh, how you do with the manual test that's uh, we're going to see in detail so for example let's say 
and you have admin and user credentials uh, when you are doing the pen test, right? So you are trying to access uh, admin APIs uh, using your user credentials. Uh, so that's that's something like a broken access control because you are trying to escalate your privilege. And then you are trying to, uh, like you know, use the user credentials of user A and trying to access the data of user B. That's again uh, broken access control because you are only authorized to see your data and not the other user's data. So you can modify the user IDs, you can modify username while in the request and see if the application behaves differently or gives you any other data. Uh, the other tool that I, I pretty much use is Burp Intruder. So how I use this tool is, uh, so once you send the request to the Burp Intruder, and suppose the request contains the user ID. Uh, so for example, let's say you want to see the your profile, and when you click on the profile button, it sends the request off uh, with the user ID one. And now you want to try if you can see the uh, profile of any other user which you are not authorized to. I pretty much configure the Burp Intruder with the payload uh, by changing user ID from one to let's say 1,000 and, and start the automated automated attack rather than me replaying the attack one after another. That's that's way easy to do. So that's how you can use the Burp Intruder for find, finding out the uh, uh, this sort of vulnerability. You can also use Burp Intruder to uh, figure out like any other APIs which are hidden and not accessible to the user, such as like slash admin slash profile admin, and then change password. And this sort of APIs you can give, build a build a set of payload. Uh, and once you build the payload set, you can use for any number of applications. So that's again one of the things you can do. So you can use the Burp Intruder to automate such attacks, but again, do not rely on SAS or DAS tools to find this vulnerability. And the last thing uh, is indirect object reference, right? So indirectly, if you're trying to access something, so as I said, like you chain the user ID, you chain the uh, merchant ID or something, and then it directly you're able to get access to that uh, particular user, then that's the indirect object reference. That's, that's the vulnerability. Uh, that's part of the broken access control. So these are some of the checks that yeah, you should be doing and and whenever you you uh, get to pen test uh, such applications just make sure you go through admin functionality you go through user functionality and make sure there are uh, what are the privileges which user does not have so you can try and exploit those uh, pages right now let's let's see some examples and then uh, i guess you would know better uh, where these vulnerabilities are so we'll we'll talk about the first one uh, which is facebook data breach which happened in 2018 i don't know if you guys remember so uh, this was a big data breach. So there was uh, there's a feature called View As. Um, so if you are in your Facebook profile and you want to view your profile as how your friend will see or how the how the any other user who is not your friend but the public user will see. So if you want to see that, you have the View As feature, and then you can see your profile uh, as a third party. And uh, what went wrong with the Facebook is they actually, uh, when you do this view as feature, it actually allowed uh, the third party to view the token of the, get the token of the user. Now, uh, an attacker can use this token to impersonate and, and get several details of the user, such as birth dates, the photos, and where they have checked in, and, and all sort of personal information, right? Your phone number, and etc. And And Facebook did commit that they uh, pretty much lost, like, thousands of users uh, data that was that was like a uh, big breach uh, that happened in 2018 so even if you google it you'll be easily able to find it so that was the issue like this should have been restricted to only uh, users who own the account but now since the token was revealed anyone uh, with the token can uh, access that personal information right now other uh, uh, vulnerability or other exploit that happened was for the world play pay uh, breach. I don't know. It's it's broad, but that's a breach uh, that happened in 2016. And this is a payment uh, service or payment software. And uh, the breach here was simple, as we discussed earlier. So if I'm paying, uh, uh, let's say, if I'm the merchant and if I want to pay someone, and my ID is one two three, if I change my ID to four five six, then I'll be able to see all the transactions made by that uh, merchant. That was yeah. That was pretty straightforward. Like sort of this, this you can consider as an indirect uh, object reference. 
but again uh, in, in indirect object reference you really want you're just able to see certain pages which is not something you are manipulating so here we are manipulating the merchant id so it's not complete idor vulnerability but it's similar to that and the last one i i want to share with you is uh, some uh, a vulnerability which was reported by me uh, very recently i'm not going to of course uh, disclose the client name or the app name where it, where, where it was uh, found but the vulnerability was pretty interesting and it was full account compromise uh, due to broken access control so uh, so the application allowed users to change the password or right so if i'm in my profile i of course i'm able to change my password now the thing uh, which application did wrong was uh, let's say if i'm trying to uh, change the password it will send my email address it will send my uh, yeah and my my uh, user id so when i send my user id email address it uses it trusts the user input to change the password now what i did was i changed the user id so there was another API where you send the user ID and you get the email address back. So what I did was I I ran the intruder to get all the email address and then I used the change password API to change the password of all the email addresses which I found and that was a full account compromise because all the uh, accounts that belong to those email address now have been locked out and I now gain access to all of those accounts because I have changed, I have changed the password to those accounts. So that was a big account compromise. Just imagine like how big is the vulnerability if you can easily lock out thousands of millions of users uh, in any of the public profile. That that's that's huge, right? So uh, when you're testing such applications, just make sure you keep on like you know checking this sort of data and you keep on checking this sort of uh, vulnerability. And this is also like you know interesting because you're not testing any any. Uh, uh, like you know simple things like injection or something this is very interesting because you have to determine what are the possible threats like you have to you have to think from the attacker's mindset and, and determine what wrong one can do uh, with this functionality how can one abuse this use case and then you build that abuse use case and try to exploit that so that's that's very much required and and believe me or not i i find this vulnerability uh, in 70% of the applications as of now because this is very very hard to prevent and we will discuss why it is so first off like you know of course the prevention technique is implement access control but it sounds easy it is not and the reason it is difficult is um suppose you are starting like you know uh, you you are a startup and let's say there are four or five users who are admin users because they want to uh, have access to everything and they do not want any reliability on anyone else but as the company grows or as the user base grows uh, now you have 50 users and with 50 different work profiles so for example there is an hr user there is a developer there is an assistant there is a pm there's an uh, like you know CEO that is uh, legal, and everyone has a different access profile. So one will have ac more access than the others, while other might have less access on one app but more access on the other app than the other user. So because of all this complexity, it's very difficult to maintain the access profile, and that's why sometimes like you know the companies are not able. They, they actually they need someone to go back and and re audit and make sure everyone is assigned to the right access groups. So that's a that's a big uh, big thing. The other thing is sometimes you are not able to revoke the access of the person who has uh, like who left the company, and and that's how sometimes like you know that the person who has left still gets access to this application. And uh, early early the days all of the applications were behind the network behind the like you know uh, your corporate network so nobody from the outside can hit that but in the recent uh, everything is SaaS, so everything is open to the internet and then you can easily one can easily hit the login endpoint and then they can enumerate if their password is valid or not so that's that's a big thing you want to make sure uh, the access revocation happens as soon as someone leaves uh as i said like managing multiple access profile is difficult so that's why if we take an example of the aws where you have the im groups 
so you can categorize you can give certain permission to certain groups and when the new user joins instead of attaching an access profile to the user you put that user into the group and then that that user will automatically inherit the permission that the group has so instead of assigning the access assign the role so this user is hr so it has hr role and hr role has this many permissions that would be easy to manage because you you are not managing individual user you are just managing the groups of user right so if you have if you have to add permission or delete the permission for the group of users you are not going to delete permission from individual you just take the permission away from the group and that will affect to all the users and always as i said like follow the list privilege previous week i yeah previous week i think we deep dive into uh, that that was really good so make sure you do watch that video about the aws so that was a list privilege how aws has implemented the list privilege and why this is very much required so by default you always deny the access by default you give the minimal permission if your developer only needs a read only access to certain things then only give read only access unless there is an exception and if you ask for the some additional access then only then give the additional do not ever, ever over uh, per, give her over permission permissions and then reduce the permission that's going to mess up a lot so always follow the list privilege that's something you always want to recommend to your developers or your clients uh the other prevention technique is logging and monitoring uh so for example if you are seeing any like you know uh, unauthorized attempts to log in to your login endpoint or you are you are seeing uh, the person who has left in and trying to log into your uh, login so if you are doing the uh, if you are seeing the repeated failures that means someone is trying to brute force or someone is trying to get into your application and and then that's when you can take some action so make sure you do that and of course last but not the least this is very very important so any application that you launch make sure you have the continuous testing and monitoring in place you have the integration testing running 24/7 because if you are going to push any of the changes and and if any of the tests fails it's easy very easy for you to find out before you push that change to production before exposing our application to so many attackers in the wild so be like the integration test will let you know oh this test failed and then you have to fix something before you push the production so make sure uh, whenever you are reviewing the application uh, you are reviewing you are making sure that your client has continuous testing in place you, uh, they have unit testing integration test in place to monitor this uh, like you know critical functionality critical workflows uh authentication authorization at least uh for sure otherwise do not allow to push that to production so this is a uh, well in depth uh like you know broken access control uh, i hope this uh, have has given you some values if you have any particular questions do let me know in terms of how do you test or or if you want, if you want to pick my brain in terms of how do i test certain scenarios so uh, i would be happy to share so please leave me a comment uh, and ask me a question Uh, if you have any inputs for me, like what else do you test in the access control? Uh, if you have a good number of test cases you want to share with our community, please do so as well. Um, this concludes our discussion on this topic. But uh, please hit the like button and then subscribe uh, to our my channel. Also follow us on Facebook where we post the regular updates. And that's it from me. Uh, I'll see you guys next week. Bye.